Hey guys, so today I'm going to show you how to make 100 balls in Game Salad. So let's get started. Alright guys, so to get started, let's go ahead and open up Game Salad. Now let's create a new blank project. I'm going to enlarge this real quick, and I'm going to just call our project Balls. Now let's go to our scenes, our initial scene. Let's create an actor. Our first actor will be our ball. Another act, create another actor. Our other actor will be our cup. We need a wall, so create another actor, call it wall. Another actor, which will be our bottom wall. This is the wall that we're going to move to let the balls free. And lastly, we need a destroyer. Okay, now let's go ahead and go into our ball. And here I actually have an image for a ball, so I'm just gonna click and drag that in. You guys don't need an image, but it's better, so it gives you, it lets you know exactly what it's going to look like. So let's go ahead and go into our physics, and we're going to make the collision shape a circle. We're going to change the bounciness to zero, and it's going to be all movable and everything still, so keep all that the same. Now let's go to our wall, and here we're going to go down to physics. We're going to make it non-movable, so unclick that check uncheck that movable box and we're going to change the bounciness to zero again and that's all good now now let's go back and we need our bottom wall to be the same so physics non-movable and bounciness to zero okay now let's go ahead and go to our ball and just to add a collision thing, a collision shape. So anytime it, anytime it, anytime it collides with any of the actors that we just talked about, such as the wall or the bottom wall, then it will bounce off. Or since there's no bounciness, then it will just fall on it, and nothing will happen. So let's go ahead, actor of type, and say. So it says bounce when colliding with actor of type wall. Now copy and paste that. And we also want to say that for bottom wall. And lastly, we just want it to bounce when we hit our ball, too, just so they don't collide with each other all the time. So anyway, um, now let's add an acceleration. So accelerate. We're going to make it the direction of 270, which is just straight down. And we're going to change the acceleration to 700. The faster the acceleration, the faster it falls down. So I'm just going to keep it around 700. And also change, make sure to change this to relative to scene. If you make it on relative to actor, it'll start spinning in weird directions, and it doesn't work well. So anyway, let's go back. And oh, I also forgot. So let's go home. And we need to change our platform to iPhone portrait. And since we have nothing on our seams, nothing will be affected. So let's go ahead and go back to our initial scene. And now what we want to just double click on our wall and we're going to change the size and make the width five and keep the height the same. So now let's just put that in our scene and we're going to make a basic shape of what a funnel would look like in this game. So now to change the rotation, we can just double click, change the rotation to, this will be a 45 degree angle, oh, four or five, okay. Now let's go back and just move it, okay. Now let's go to our wall and do the same and this time we will change our rotation value to 315 now I got that value just by subtracting 360 and subtract the 45 degree angle so 315 okay now let's move that into its proper position okay and lastly let's just add another wall here another wall here and let's change the size. So I'm just going to change the size to a, a 40. So a height of 40. Now move that up so it touches the wall up here. 
And I'm going to do that with the other wall that we created, so height of 40. And move it up. All right, now lastly, we need to go into our bottom wall. And here we're going to change the size to a, a width of 100 and a height of 5. Okay, now we need to add a rule that says uh, that says when the actor receives event, touch is outside, then we want this to move. So we will actually go change attribute. This will make it so it's instant. So change attribute, and we were going to say game, I'm sorry, bottom wall dot position dot x, and change that to We'll just make it zero. It doesn't matter where it goes it, truly, but if you want it to look better, you will find out the exposition yourself, but that's the way I'm just doing it. So anyway, copy and paste that again. I accidentally did that. So um, so copy and paste that again, and this time we will say self self.position.x, I mean self.position.y, and just make that zero too. Again, if you were making your own game, then you would make it a different value but I'm just gonna keep it the same now let's go into our bottom wall again and right down here in our rule it says otherwise and this time we want to just copy and paste those attributes and paste them in to our otherwise now we're gonna fix that in a minute but let's go to our bottom wall drag it into a position that we think looks alright now double click on it again find out the position the X position and the Y position and just copy basically what it is. So the X position is 160.7461. I'm just going to round that to 160. And our Y value is 361. Okay. Now just to show what this does, when you click, it, disappear, it disappears off into the corner up here. And then when you re release, then it moves it back to its proper position. Now let's go back and I'm going to add a ball in. But first we need to change the size. So let's go ahead and change the size to a five, an eight. We'll make it an eight by eight circle. All right, now we wanna click and drag our balls onto our scene. So let's just click and drag around 10 balls onto our scene. And this should just give us a good idea of how the balls interact with the scene around it and with other balls on the scene. So. Just add a few more. And that should be good. Okay, now let's preview. And as you can see, the balls fall down and they bounce off the walls and they just go down. And now when you click on the scene, they fall down when you, this goes away. So that's how everything works. Now let's go back. And I'm actually going to make this a little bit smaller just because... Um, the funnel in 100 balls is actually much smaller and I think that actually makes for a better gameplay. So let's just click on our wall real quick and I'm going to change the size to 120-ish. Do that with our other wall. Okay. And now let's move them into their proper position. So there, there, and of course you have to move your funnel down a bit more and move it to that proper position. Okay, that's being annoying. Okay, come and. Okay, that should that should be a good representation of how everything should work. All right, now that makes a smaller funnel, and you guys, of course, would add more balls if you guys want to test it out better, but as you can see, that's how everything works and how everything interacts with each other. Now we're going to add a wall at the bottom just because just so when these balls fall down, uh, I'm gonna, it's going to wrap the Y. So let's go ahead and do that now. So we're going to wrap the Y value, so let's go and up here is a game and scene tab right here so click on scene and under attributes there should be a wrap y value now click check mark that 
And let's just preview this, show you what it does. Now, as you can see, it wraps the Y value, and when the balls fall down, they just go right back to the top. Now, just so you don't get any stray balls uh, going off right around here or on the other side, and it makes everything wrong, we're going to add some walls at the bottom that just make it funnel into the right position as in 100 balls. So now let's go ahead and click and click and drag a wall into our scene. Now double click on the wall that we just created and I'm going to change the rotation to a 45 degree angle and also add another wall double click on that and change the rotation to a 315 degree angle. Okay, now just put it in its proper position. And this just makes it funnel into the proper position. Okay, now we need to add our destroyer and cup onto our scene. So let's go ahead and go to our destroyer. I'm going to make the width 200 and the height 5. And go to our cup. And I'm going to make the size of the cup about a, we'll make a 40 by 60 rectangle. And of course, um, I, I would show you guys how to make a, you guys can actually just use the same concept of adding walls and stuff to make a funnel cup, you know. That's how it is in 100 balls. But just to give you a good idea of how everything should work, I'm just doing this. Okay, now let's go ahead and add a destroyer onto our scene and let's go into our ball value okay now we want to say add a rule that says if the actor receives event overlaps or collides with actor of type cup then we want to set an attribute to be true but we didn't create that attribute yet yet so let's go home go to our initial scene and go to our attributes and here we're going to create a boolean value so create a boolean value and we're going to make this hit cup. Okay. Now let's go back to our actors and go to our ball again. And now we want to say when the actor receives event overlaps or collides with actor of type cup, then we want to change the attribute. So change attribute game I'm sorry. Yeah, game.hit cup and make it true. Now we also want to add a timer, and you don't want to make the timer too long. So make this timer about, um, say, after after point, we'll say 0.7 seconds, because we want it just to be long enough, just so that it can tell when it hits the destroyer that the ball is correct. But it, all, but you'd want it not too long, so that when the when the balls behind it hit, then they will be destroyed if they didn't hit the cup. So anyway, so after 0.7 seconds, I think that's a good good estimate value of of what the timer should be. So after 0.7 seconds, then we want to set the game.hitcup to false. Okay. So now let's go on to this again and we want to say if the actor receives event over a collapse or collides, so copy and paste the rule that we had up here, and this time we want to say if it collides with the actor of type destroyer, then add another rule that says another rule that says if the attribute game dot hit cup is true, I'm sorry, is false, then we want to destroy the actor. And of course, if it was if it was true, you could always do otherwise. So if it is true, then um, in uh, for instance, you might want to increase the score or increase the speed that the cups go at or something like that. But just for this purpose, the purpose of this tutorial, I'm just going to show you the basics. So anyway, um, let's go back, and we're going to just preview this real quick. Now, since the cup is right below everything, everything's just going to fall through and everything's going to be fine. But now we're going to make the cup move. So let's go to our cup. And we're just going to add a move to action. Move to. Or no, we won't say move to. We want to just say move. So move. 
in the direction of 180 degrees. This just makes it go this way. So 180 degrees at a speed of, we'll make it fairly slow, so uh, 100. I think that's fine right now. But 100, 180 degrees relative to scene. And we also want to go and wrap our x value. So let's go ahead and go back to our scene again and wrap our x value. Now, of course, if you guys wanted to uh, make this, this cup different colors and spawn different cups, then you would actually just have a destroyer over here and not wrap the x value. But for the purpose of this tutorial, I'm just going to show you how to make it wrap around the x value. And it's going to be the same cup over and over again. So again, same cup over and over again. I'm just going to release a couple balls. As you can see, they all fell through. Now I'm going to miss the cup. And let's go back. I don't understand what just happened, so let me just see this real quick. Maybe I need to turn down the timer a little bit. Oh, I forgot to say. After 0.7 seconds, run to completion. Make sure that is selected. Now this should work. So now they all die. And when you hit the cup, everything is fine. Then when you miss the cup, everyone dies. Okay, so that is basically how to make this game in Game Salad. Anyway guys, that's it for this tutorial. If you guys enjoyed it, be sure to hit that like button down below if you guys want an extension or anything like that. If you guys have any extension for future tutorials, be sure to leave that in the comments. And if you guys have any questions, be sure to leave that in the comments too. Check out my website, check me out on Twitter down in the description down below. Anyway guys, that's it for this tutorial and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.